All right, so those, I think this is why it's now becoming more and more of a problem. Of us are living longer, and we now know more about the brain. I'm going to give you 20 years of brain research on one slide. <laughs> but there is a new field that started about the late 1970s, early 1980s, called cognitive neuroscience. And cognitive really means basically the software, not the brain cells itself, but referring to the functions of the brain. And neuroscience really means has to, has to do with the functionality of the brain and how the neurons, how they, the, the cells communicate with each other. And so there's been this huge field of cognitive neuroscience, which is basically mapping form versus structure and understanding how the brain operates. And it's really changed everything we know about existence uh, in terms of the brain. Um, and that field is still expanding. Um, we now know more about the types of cells. Um, it's not just about the neuron. Um, and these are some of the myths that have been, been ex exploded uh, recently. Uh, number one is that the cells actually communicate with each other. There's an electrical charge called an action potential. So how cells communicate is they will communicate chemically or electrically. And if some of those cells die, think about it, it's just a little gap. It's a pickup in that relay system. And so this is why you'll experience some of those uh, symptoms. But we now know the blood-brain barrier does not protect against chemotherapy. There's evidence in research labs about this um, using animals as well as um, chemobrain. But the good news is that the brain can rewire itself. In brain cells, you can restore function by creating new cells and through interacting with the environment, and I'll go into that in just a bit, you can rewire your brain. You can build new cells. It's like getting a new car, you know? You might have a fender that's missing, but like, well, let's get a new fender in there. Well, let's get a new drive shaft. And it can function again. Um, we also know that brains, your brain, your thoughts, affects your physiological functions. Whatever you believe about yourself becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So there's also, it's not just a a spiritual element, the spiritual element becomes a physiological manifestation. And there's a lot of evidence about this as well. And even taking that one step further, there have been studies about how meditation, those not I'm talking not talking about people that sit around and say, oh, I'm talking about just watching yourself breathe, observing your own breath, can actually elevate your immune system by creating what are called T lymphocyte cells. And this has been demonstrated in, in research. 